A partial lunar eclipse darkens the surface of the moon, and Comet Leonard continues to brighten as it approaches Earth. Let's go outside and take a look at the night sky for November of 2021. I'm Michael Martin, and this is Late Night Astronomy. Regardless of your level of experience, we're going to break the nighttime sky down into five categories to make sure that you're able to get out and enjoy something in it, whether you own a telescope, binoculars, or you're just using the naked eye. For this month, we're going to be starting with meteor showers, then moving to the surface of the moon, focusing on the eight planets of our solar system. We'll have a special segment on Comet Leonard as it approaches Earth and the Sun for November and December of this year and then we'll end with deep sky objects. If you enjoy this video, please like it and subscribe to this channel. But most importantly, let me know about your questions or anything that you're able to get out to observe or image in the comment section below. I'm also excited to announce that the official Late Night Astronomy merchandise store is now live and ready to go. If you go down into the description of this video and look below, you'll see things like this t-shirt and other items that you could consider buying if you have an interest in that. Thank you all for your support, and I really appreciate all that this community has done for me over the past several months and years. Now let's begin the month of November by taking a look at the best meteor showers for those of you to get out and enjoy over the next few weeks. Meteor showers are one of the best ways to get into amateur astronomy because they require absolutely no equipment, but they do take a little bit of patience. The best shower for the month of November is going to be the Leonids. To see it, go outside on the early morning of November 17th and face towards the east. Rising into the sky will be the constellation Leo, where these meteors will emanate from. On most years, you can hope to see between 10 and 20 meteors from the Leonids, but the moon setting in the west will wash out some of the dimmer ones, putting that count closer to 5 to 10 meteors per hour this year. Be sure to dress comfortably in layers, as it can get cold for quite a few of us this time of year in that part of the morning, and give yourself plenty of time, at least one to two hours to go out and enjoy the show. Keep your expectations tempered this year, but always know that it's such an incredible thing that you're able to go out and see a streak of light that's a remnant of a comet or an asteroid going through our upper atmosphere that you're able to enjoy from your own backyard. The moon may wash out a number of the Leonids this month, but thankfully it makes up for that by putting on an incredible show with a partial lunar eclipse later this month for many of us around the planet. The wonderful thing about the moon is that it truly does span the experience levels in terms of amateur astronomy. While it's nice to have telescopes or a binocular to look at its surface details, you don't need that at all and you can just go out and enjoy tracking its phases. For November, the phases begin with a new moon on November 4th. It's during this time that the moon rises and sets with the sun, making it not visible in the night sky. We then move on to its first quarter phase on November 11th. This is my favorite time to observe the moon with the angle of the sunlight revealing a great wealth of detail on its surface. On the night of November 19th, the full moon will rise just as the sun sets and the last quarter moon follows on November 27th. My lunar observing challenge for you this month is to go outside and experience the partial lunar eclipse. For this portion of the video, we're going to focus on the experience of people who live in the west coast of North America using Pacific Standard Time. But please be sure to double check your date and times wherever you may live if you're able to see it. If you live on the west coast, go outside around 11.20 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the night of November 18th to begin to see a portion of the lunar surface slowly begin to darken as the Earth moves in between the Sun and the Moon. Just before 1 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on the morning of November 19th, this partial lunar eclipse will be at its peak with almost all of the moon, but not quite all of it, being covered by the shadow of the Earth. 
For those of you that are able to see or image this event, please be sure to share with me your experience and your images if you're able to get out and enjoy it. And again, be sure to double check the time and dates for this event, depending on where you live. Let's move away from our atmosphere and moon into the deeper parts of our solar system by focusing on the best views of the eight major planets for the month of November. Let's begin as we always do with the closest planet to the sun, Mercury. Your best chance to see Mercury is going to be in the early morning sky, just before sunrise at the start of the month as it makes its way into the lower part of the eastern sky. But as Mercury always does, it quickly swings back around the sun by the end of the month. Venus, on the other hand, is an incredibly bright object easily viewed right after sunset in the southwest sky. It dominates the sky in the early evening as it continues to brighten and go through its phases. Here's a comparison of Venus at the start and end of the month, which shows the remarkable difference in its size and phase. Mars begins to make its way into the early morning sky in the east and actually has a fairly close pass to Mercury on November 10th, but it's just not at the best position anytime soon for serious observing or imaging. Throughout the month of November, the night sky is dominated after sunset with Jupiter and Saturn as they move from the south to the southwest sky throughout the month. Jupiter's beautiful cloud structure and moons are ever-changing on a nightly basis, and what more can be said about the incredible sight you can see from the rings of Saturn. My solar system observing challenge for you this month is to go outside and point out Jupiter and Saturn to a friend or family member right after sunset. You don't have to have a pair of binoculars or a telescope to do this, but if you do, share that experience of seeing it with someone that you know. It could be one of the most amazing things that they've ever seen in the nighttime sky, even if it's something that you're used to seeing on a monthly or yearly basis. As we go deeper into our solar system, let's take a look at Uranus, and it's actually a really good month to see it when it approaches opposition on November 4th with your best view starting just after sunset as it rises out of the east. Finishing out the Elite Eight is the farthest planet from the sun, Neptune, which continues to trail Saturn and Jupiter in the southeast for most of the early evening and night. Comet Leonard, after months of us following it on this series, is finally reaching a point where many of us are going to be able to see it in the early morning sky with a pair of binoculars and a telescope. And we hope by the end of this month in early December, it could possibly be at naked eye visibility, putting on one of the best shows we've had this year for a comet. To see it right now, let's go outside in the early morning this November about a couple hours before sunrise and look towards the Ursa Major constellation. Throughout November, Comet Leonard will be moving through the constellations Ursa Major and Canis Venetici as it brightens. One night of interest will be on November 24th, when Comet Leonard moves right past the Whale Galaxy. If you own a large telescope or do astrophotography, this will be a neat pairing in the sky for you to observe or image. Comet Leonard will only get brighter and brighter as we go through November into the first couple weeks of December, where hopefully it'll become at that point a naked eye object for many of us. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and come back in December as we do an in-depth study of this comet, hopefully being able to share some observing reports and images as well. That is if it doesn't completely fall apart as it approaches the sun. We'll just have to wait and see. As we leave our solar system, let's take a look now at the best deep sky objects for the month of November. This month we're gonna focus on one major object because it's one of my favorite that's out there during this time of the year for the fall and early parts of the winter. That's the Pleiades star cluster. The Pleiades reveals itself at various different levels depending on the equipment that you own. And my observing challenge for you this month would be to go outside with the naked eye, 
a pair of binoculars, and a telescope if you have it, to compare the Pleiades at those three different levels of magnification. First, go out with the naked eye, look up, find it, and count to see how many stars you can see that make it up. Next, get out a pair of binoculars, train them on the target, and count again how many stars you can see. Finally, if you have a telescope, take it outside, find the Pleiades, use a low magnification eyepiece, and count how many stars are now visible in the field of view. You're gonna find some incredible differences at these three different levels of magnification from the naked eye to a telescope. And be sure to let me know what numbers you find in terms of counting the stars in the comment section below. Those are just some of the best things going on in the night sky for the month of November, but I'm sure there are some things I've left off of the list. If you've got anything that you're excited to get out to see, or if there's anything that you've been able to go out and observe or image, please be sure to let me know about those objects and your experience seeing them in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.